In this video, we will run through the process of aligning photographs, building a dense cloud, and finally creating a textured mesh and exporting it. Once you have imported and masked the photographs, you'll need to align the photographs into a sparse point cloud. A point cloud is a series of vertices, single points in a 3D space, that are used to create a mesh in the following stages. To start the process, you'll go to Workflow, Align Photos. In the menu box that comes up, you'll see an option for Accuracy. This relates to how much the image resolution is up or downscaled by the software. To keep the images the same resolution as they were taken in, set this to High. If you need to quickly check that alignment has worked, or you do not have the time to process it at high, you can set the quality lower, but be aware that this will reduce the quality of the model. Generic preselection speeds up the alignment process by running the process at low first to match the photographs, and then ups the quality. It should be left on. The next box should be set to source as we want it to run directly from the photographs. Other options include estimated, which is for when you already have aligned the cameras but are running the alignment again with different parameters. The box to the left is greyed out until you pick the sequential mode. This mode assumes that you have taken the photographs in an organised fashion. You would be most likely to use it with things like aerial photography. Should you need to reset the alignment because you have added new photos or removed some, you will click the Reset Current Alignment box. It is greyed out here as there is no alignment currently active. In the Advanced tab, there are a few options for key points limits, tie points limits. The default values are pretty good, but should the photos fail to align, it is often a good idea to increase them as this adds extra points to each photo which can be aligned. Guided image matching should only be used on cameras with extremely high resolution. If you do not have that, leave it off. That said, however, if your cameras do not align properly, you should always try with it on, as this sometimes helps. Adaptive camera model fitting tries to make adjustments based on the camera and lens you took the photographs with. In my experience, this has caused more problems than it has solved, so I tend to leave it off. Again, if yours doesn't align, there is no harm in turning it on to try. You should also set apply masks to key points, as this will mask the photograph successfully in the model. When you're ready, press OK and it will process. If the model doesn't appear directly, click the sparse point cloud button at the top. The next step is to use the sparse point cloud to create a denser mesh that can be used for creating DEMs and 3D meshes. By the end of this stage, your model should be quite recognisable as the object you photographed. Before starting the dense cloud calculation, it is a very good idea to resize the area that is going to be worked on. Around the sparse cloud, you'll see that there is a cube drawn in. This is the working area. Any points outside of this box will not be considered during the next calculation, so removing extraneous points will reduce the calculation time and give a cleaner result. To change the size of the box, go to the icon on the bar and click the arrow next to it. You will note that there are several options for resizing, rotating and moving the area. To resize the area, click the resize icon and drag the gizmo spheres around until only your object is within the working area. When that is done, go to the workflow menu and select build dense cloud. In the menu that comes up, there are a number of options. Quality refers to how much the original images will be downscaled. Ultra high refers to one to one scaling, but will usually end in a processing time that is too long to be practical. We typically use high for smaller models and medium for very large models and have found that the results work well for these. Avoid low or lowest unless you are testing to see if it will work. In the advanced section, you will find options for depth filtering. Depth filtering essentially removes smaller details that might be related to poor photographs. Unless you have had problems with your mesh being too noisy, like having lumps and bumps that are not supposed to be there, then you should just leave this on mild. Reused depth maps will only be available if you have previously created a dense cloud for this model. If you have and are redoing the dense cloud, turn this option on as it will save you time. Calculate point colours attributes colours to the points of the dense cloud. Although a coloured dense point cloud is nice to look at, I have found that this is a step where the software is quite likely to crash. It can also take a very long time to process it. As such, I usually turn it off. Calculate point confidence counts how many depth maps have been used to calculate each point. 
This isn't a particularly useful as you can normally tell when there are areas that lack coverage by looking at the dense cloud, so I tend to leave this off too. When you are ready, press OK and the dense cloud will calculate. If you want to be sure that the process is still running, click the details button on the processing window and you will see what is happening. This process can take several hours or even several days depending on how many photographs you have used. This is also one of the processes that use your GPU to calculate, so you should expect your computer to be noisy while this is running. When it is finished, you will now have a dense cloud that should be recognisable as the object you photographed. If it does not come up immediately, click the Dense Point Cloud tab in the menu. To build a mesh, go to Workflow, Build Mesh. In the menu that comes up, you can choose your source data, which can be the sparse cloud, depth maps and dense cloud. Dense cloud will create a very high resolution model from your previous step, whereas depth maps will use the calculated depth from the photographs. Use depth maps if you are going to use the arbitrary surface type. There are only two options for surface type. The first is height field and is suited for flat surfaces and terrains only. If you try to make a non-flat model with this mode, you'll end up with a mess as it will only try to construct it properly from one direction. The other mode is arbitrary 3D. With this mode, the software can render from all sides like an ordinary 3D model. The downside is that it takes a lot longer to process. If you are using depth maps, you can select the quality. Again, ultra high means using the original photograph scale, but it will take a very long time. Medium and high will suffice if you are using this method. Face count determines the final size of the model in terms of how many polygons it will have. There are several presets that you can choose depending on what you intend to do with your model. Since we usually decimate our models to a much lower poly count, we tend to start with high so that we can build normal maps a process which will be described later in the course. Interpolation fills holes in your mesh. If you have a very good photograph set then you can select disabled and it will create a solid mesh for you. But if you have any problems you can leave enabled on. Be aware that this may generate new geometry that might be a challenge to get rid of. Again, leave calculate vertex colours off. Also leave strict volumetric masks off as this will slow your processing down considerably to little benefit. Press OK and wait for the dense point cloud to become a mesh. When the processing is finished, you may need to click the view mesh button at the top of the screen. If your model has too many bits around the edges, you can clean it up using the lasso tool in the top menu. Select the lasso tool and then drag around the areas you want to remove to select them, and then press delete. If you do not do this, the next steps may fail as the software will try to calculate each loose part separately. Now that you have a mesh, you will need to create a texture for it. Agisoft uses the photographs to create a texture based on the location of the photographs and where they are located on the model. It then creates a square image that is UV mapped to the mesh, a process that will be covered later in the course. Go to Workflow, Build Texture and in the options box that opens you will need to change a couple of things. You want your texture to be diffuse, which is essentially colours, and you want your mapping mode to be orthophoto, as this will give a sensible UV map with only one island. Your texture size should be 4096, but you can also change it to lower if it's taking too long to process. Press OK and the texture will be generated. You can now view your model with the texture by going to the View menu option and selecting the Model Textured option. You should now see a fully textured 3D object. To export the model, go to File, Export Model and then select the location. There are multiple options for which file format to save as. The most common and simplest to work with later is OBJ. You can also export the 3D model as a PDF. Click Save and then OK and you will have successfully exported your 3D model. In this video, we have covered the steps necessary to create a textures model which is ready to be exported.